This is the 2003 PC Dojin shooting game Galax. It's got some pretty nice production values. It's got a story and an, a cinematic intro that we're just going to let run here while I do some housekeeping as far as the game's mechanics and kind of what's interesting about it. The Xbox 360 controller that you see down there is uh, is going to show my inputs because this game has a very unique mechanic where you enter fighting game inputs after selecting certain enemies or environment elements with a kind of a radar that spreads slowly throughout the screen when you hold the B button. So you can either freeze enemies or destroy enemies with your by hacking them, or you can make them your ally and have them work for you. And all of this game is built around those kind of three little uh, tasks that you have and uh, mixing and matching them with different enemy formations and environmental hazards. And that in and of itself is a pretty interesting like recipe for the game. It doesn't fully succeed, in my opinion, at kind of using this system in the best, most fun way possible. Often it just it rides it a little too much, like and makes it so that you're just frantically inputting these like fighting game commands, you know, multiple times per second, if you possibly can. And uh, I don't love that. I do really enjoy a lot of stuff this game brings to the table, though, so um, as we watch it, I will talk about stuff that I that I am very much impressed by because a lot of it is impressive and stuff that I just think is like a design fail. And uh, that's the fun part about a Dojin shooting game is that usually it comes from the mind of a single person or of uh, very few people. And so there's not a whole lot of editing or market testing or anything of that nature uh, same same really goes with arcade games although you know in a lot of cases i i feel like you know time crunches uh, factor in there and kind of uh what's going to make the most money factors in there whereas these uh little indie games that came out for pc um or you know personal computers in japan they're just like total passion projects. And often that means they like shoot for the stars in terms of their ideas or, or their execution, but they're equally, they have like equal amounts of flawed design, uh, which is not, you know, not the worst thing in the world. It's, it, it just makes for an interesting kind of three dimensional game experience. So yeah, let's talk about it. And by the way, I played this on a stick. It, it's, it seems like it would be really hard to play this on anything but on a stick since you're doing fighting game inputs, but I couldn't get Gamepad Viewer to cooperate with the stick view. Uh, so I just use this Xbox 360 controller view just to, yeah, I mean, you, I, I know people aren't gonna be like staring at that thing down there, but just to get an idea of the inputs that you have to complete to get these things to like be your friends. So uh, there I did uh, up, down, and here I'm doing up, down, A, B, C to uh, get these to get these bombs to be to work for me essentially, thus blowing up these big ships. And that gets me a technical 5,000 point bonus. So yeah, that's uh, when you see that indicated by the enemies turning blue. When they turn yellow, that means I've frozen them, and usually that means the enemy will both stop its movement and stop its shooting. And we'll see the last um, hack in uh, maybe next level. I don't use the the kind of destroy hack that much, which just kills an enemy after a certain period of like wait time, because the enemies release revenge bullets, and it's just you're often there's so much shit on the screen that if you use that command and have a ton of revenge bullets, you know, spew out at you, it's just not ideal. And it just made me think, oh, this. There's not really a good time or place to use this, except for when the game explicitly tells you to do so with an enemy colored purple, which uh, is the game telling you, use that command to 
to kill this enemy. Um, same with blue and yellow. So yellow is the freeze color, blue is the is the um, ally color, or like be my friend color. This is a nice first stage. I think it does teach the kind of game mechanics. It provides a lot of situations that teach the game mechanics really well. Like these guys, these bigger carriers shoot those blue sphere enemies. And uh, eventually, at first you might just shoot those guys, those carriers, because they give you a health item. But eventually you'll learn that uh, the better way, the better thing to do is use their own blue enemies against them to, uh, to get that 5,000 technical bonus. And then this boss, you might think, okay, well, I'm going to use the, these blue spheres uh, to, to kill the boss, you know, like to make them my friends. Well, th that's actually not the easiest way or the best way. Uh, whenever you can in this game, you want to use your yellow um, or freeze hack, which allows you to get 10 extra points per hit landed. And uh, there you go. And it also does, like, point blanking is very good because all four of your streams of shots hit. Um, the the hitbox for them is very generous. So point blanking, you don't have um, shot limit damage increase, but you do have those streams hitting the boss all at the same time. And that's very powerful and often way more powerful than seemingly the, the kind of... Uh, the kind of befriending enemies stuff that the game wants you to do, which is like a bit of a design oversight. Um, instead of going through the motions of making those blue things kill the boss, which is like sort of what the design is asking you to do, it's easiest to point blank the hell out of it. Um, I, you'll see I got two extends already, one at 50,000 points, one at 100,000. I'll get a few more. I don't know exactly what point values they appear at. I know it's like intervals of 100,000. But like, for instance, I know you don't get one at 400,000, uh, but then you do at three and five and six, but not seven. It's uh, kind of strange. This is a really neat level because it's all this big interaction with this giant, um, this gigantic ship with all of these parts. So first you, you, you got to deal with this gun, just a lone gun to kind of like, and so you'll see me, um, often, often the only way to hit something on a boss is by freezing it. So you'll often see me using yellow, not just to score, but it is good for that, but also to just kind of uh, open up the hit box of part of the boss. And so this is a, this is cool. So if you, make friends with these big uh, lightsaber look dual lightsaber looking things they block enemy shots for you that's pretty neat and now you're dealing with this giant ship and the camera's kind of floating around and you're revealing different parts of the ship that you can i'm making them blue i'm befriending them and then they kill other parts of the ship and uh and you can also freeze the uh, these little guns while they're open and shoot them with your regular shot. So it's just a big mix of using these uh, blue spheres that these carriers shoot out to get technical bonuses and then using the ship's guns against its other guns. Uh, neat level design. Uh, really had fun kind of learning how to best manage this part. Um, and so up until this point, you know, I'm thinking this this is an amazing game. Like uh, this is really cool for again for for one person to have. Uh, I think this person did the design, the music, the visuals, like everything for this game. It is very, very, very good and impressive uh, thus far. And it's impressive through the whole game. It's just it becomes more and more flawed the more ambitious it gets. All right, so and you see, you hear those uh, sounds. The, that's me frantically trying to uh, hit an input and failing. Oh my god, I just can't get it. One thing I should mention, of course, is that uh, there is a health bar. There are a couple like kind of sneaky Euro elements to this game. One of which is uh, a health bar that you can recharge with items, and uh, another is there's a lot of dead air. Um, kind of inexplicable dead air in this game that uh, I, I yeah I just I don't get it I'll, I'll point it out where it happens it's not a horrible miserable thing but the game is long it's 
Oh, and I always forget about this guy. <laughs> I always think I've killed the boss and then this guy appears. Um, to uh, to the point that I was just making. The game is really long. It's like, I think this video is, uh, is going on an hour. So, yeah, strap in if you're a, a real one and you're wa going to watch the whole thing. But, like... Why, why these moments of dead air when, when the game is long already? I I mean, I get wanting to give the player a break, but just make the game shorter. That's what, uh, you know, do some editing. But that just goes back to what we were talking about, where if you're, like, passionate enough about shooting games and you make one and, and you have the capacity like this guy to do everything, you're just going to you're just going to go for broke. Why not? I'm not saying it's good to like not edit, but I uh, I understand the impulse. Um, so you see some like scoring tricks happening here. You you can you can befriend these little missiles, and then when his beam hits them, it gets you a bunch of like 100 point score values. I'm just kind of being sloppy because okay, there's another uh, extend at 200k. And there we go. I think he's dead. Just a lot of befriending those missiles and uh, freezing the boss and then point blanking. All right, stage three. One thing that I've also neglected to mention until now, you have a special attack that becomes more useful as the game progresses. You can use it early on, but it's sort of like not necessary. But what it is, is it's a targeted, immediately activated bomb that you that you you target something by when you're holding radar, you then press button two or the B button and then your a green reticle will light up on the enemy and then it will uh if you let go of the button to it will immediately bomb them for a bunch of damage and it's a it's just a recharge with time or if you get a little health item that also recharges it this section is uh it's too easy i don't know what's i don't know what's going on here what am i missing uh, it's just lasts too long and it's the same stuff and there's not much going on. I don't know what these big squares that I kill are. Uh, there's only these two like little guns that in every portion of this first part of the stage. And then in, this is a very basic little puzzle where you just get them to kill this guy to get a technical bonus. That I, this, uh, this goes on for like multiple minutes. Um, perhaps there is some deep scoring that you can do that I'm just like missing entirely there's going to be a lot of me uh, making those kind of caveats and explaining this because I you know I didn't watch anybody else clear this or, or study it uh, very intensely I just I played it kind of using full credits and learned scoring by playing for survival and uh, and there could be there could well be stuff I'm missing, and I, and I I know that for a fact. Okay, so there you go. I'm using that. I'm using that insta bomb, that special weapon that has that blue meter up there, to kill these uh, these enemies spewing lasers down, and I use that because I can immediately collect the health item and get my full bomb back, my full special meter. So that's okay. So this is like kind of like Ikaruga y radiant silver gun style, like corridors where you're having to navigate these tight spaces. And now you have this wall that you have to hack to open up. Um, don't love this kind of stuff, but I can respect dedicating a level to it. You know, that it's not the whole game is, is a relief, but. Just not my personal favorite style of shooting gameplay. I tried to befriend those guns, so they'll shoot these guys. It didn't even work. They, they, you know, I don't know what you're supposed to do. Okay, there you go. You see, that's an example of what you're supposed to do. I got those two guns to start killing them, and each one nets me 100 points.
you can tank a bunch of hits in this game. Like, it's pretty crazy. Lots of health. But, you know, when you get to the end game, don't, don't get too cocky because it, you'll spend it. Trust me. Another of the same kind of little puzzle. I'm like, I'm befriending all of these uh, little guns so they take out this Stingray ship and all of its pieces for me. Still haven't, um, maybe I missed it when I was talking about something else, but thus far we've used the, uh, the explode hack very, very little. Um, it's the purple hack that, uh, so, but we'll see it later. Just reminding you that is that it, it exists. The freeze hack is ABC, like button one, button two, button three, if you're on a stick. The destroy hack is button one, button one, two, three, so A, A, B, C. And then, again, I explained this before, but just to say it one more time, uh, the befriend hack is up, down, A, B, C. Another boss with just maybe one too many phases. Uh, this this is sort of an interest. I mean, there's nothing that I find that interesting about this part. It's kind of fun to fight him once or twice, but it's not very hard and it just gets old. And the second part of this boss is where the real boss is. There's so much of that kind of stuff in this game where it's like there's just one element too many or this or, or one section lasts too long for no real reason um, that it just adds up. You know, it's it's for sure death by a thousand cuts here because none of this in and of itself is 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 bad. But when you play the game for a clear and you you put an hour or two into it every night, you know, these these uh these sections can kind of become slogs. Like, look at how long it's taking me to just... I've killed all the guns. Now I just got to end this, uh, this middle part, and it just has too much health. Okay, here we go. This is the real boss. This is hard. And we're just going to kind of hang out here. Oh, we're just hanging out. I guess it's I guess it's the game saying take a break from that from that thing you fought before which wasn't even very hard but okay now enter all three inputs in succession to get this door to open there'll be more of that to come in the future There is a definite, uh, a definite tendency this developer has to bring stuff in from behind, especially in the end game when it's like very, very when things are moving very fast, which I don't like. That part wasn't so bad, but it just like is foreshadowing for later in the game. Okay, again, it may seem like the best way to fight this guy is to ally with those with those uh, spheres that this guy is launching out. And you can, I, you, you'll see me do it. But honestly, again, the best way, since the game gives you so much health and you can tank so much, is to point blank this guy, or freeze him and point blank him. Now, I should, I should not, I should have been a little more brazen here. I take a death here when I really shouldn't have. That's a tough pattern to dodge right there. I think I take a death anyway. Do I manage it? Oh, no, I definitely don't. Okay. And this guy can lock onto you and freeze you, so be careful when you see that red reticle. Oh, okay. Okay, so I ended up just tanking through all of my health to kill that guy with point blank um, fire. And in doing so, I, I mean, that was very good because your health gets recharged at the beginning of each stage. And so just not losing a life there was so massive because I get all the way back up to the top of uh, life five at the beginning of the next stage instead of being at life four. So essentially like getting an extend. 
and the game rewards you for uh, how what percentage of your kind of hacking inputs that you succeeded with, which is nice, but it's not it's not any kind of significant bonus. Okay, equipping. Do uh, you know if, if there are any Galax heads? Uh, I would love to talk about this game with someone, but like don't understand what the point of this thing is both in the in the narrative sense or in the or in gameplay sense you get equipped with this thing it, it i guess it's launching you into space is i guess the idea because at the end of this whole sequence you get into space and it drops off but uh it, ha it comes with this gameplay mechanic where if you leave the middle of the screen where there's this distinct rail you like get pulled down you just see it you, you see it happen to me there um and the game flashes power down at you and you know this is sort of like oh and uh, you know in theory an interesting idea to play with but nothing ever comes of it in the in the gameplay like you can just point blank everything from the center of the screen and uh, there's no point in this stage where you're just you're you're having to contend with enemies outside of the center of the screen and and incurring power down. There's maybe one part of the mid boss that where it comes into play, but so for here for instance, okay, I befriended those like guys with the lightsabers up there, and I just stay right in the middle, and 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 none of the the kind of powering down affects me. And this happens. This is like a five minute sequence where I just do that same thing with slightly increased um, enemy formations. So here, for instance, same thing. I just befriend everybody. Point blank uh, through these through these boxes to get to the top of this ship, which is what you have to eventually kill. Ooh, that one got a little close, but again, that gives you a health item. So you're, you're, you're basically like not punished at all for tanking your way through that, which is just a bit of a, a clunk, like a bit clunky of design um, because it just, it makes their it makes this section a, a slog. They're, the challenge is just going through the motions and just making sure you hit your hacks. Because if you don't, these green guys can get kind of nasty. Or the lightsaber guys. So there you go. I'm, I'm still I've lost one health from my from the top of life six. And I've never I've basically never left the center of the screen. OK, this is the one part where it's like, OK, you it does force you outside. But it's no big deal. This is this boss has so much health. It's just insane. So while he's while he doesn't have his arms activated, and you'll see them activate soon here, I'm just trying desperately to get three three layers of point blank on him. <coughs> so I immediately allied with those um, those lightsaber arms, and the idea is you befriend these guys to pass above them. And that's the one part where it forces you outside the center of the screen. Okay, I screwed that up big time. What you're supposed to do is, what I'm supposed to do is hit a hack while I'm up there, and then you use the lightsabers to your advantage as a shield from his uh, very, very dense spray of fire. You'll see me do it successfully at least once here, but this wasn't my best uh, attempt at this boss. There it is. Okay, that's that's the loop right there for this guy. And then you just try and you just try desperately not to lose a life or too much health, and you just tank point blank him. All right, I'm up here. Now I gotta hit the hack right now. Got it. He got me anyway, but not too bad. And there you go. He's done. If you're not just like going up there and point blanking that guy with three streams whenever possible, it lasts forever. I cannot even explain to you how long it lasts. Definitely something that I mark as a, a, a flaw of this game is just the pacing of it.
here we go again. Just like a bunch of dead air. It's a transition point, you know, you're going to space, I get it. It's thematically interesting. And there, there goes that thing, okay, we're in space now, so I guess that's what its purpose was. And then immediately, be careful of this little circle of enemies, because if you're not ready to to befriend them, they just like, they, they'll release tons of bullets at you. Okay, bombed him. Every bomb comes with a slight freeze effect on whatever you bombed, which is nice. So you can get some shots off as well. You can destroy those those tanks on either side of that ship, but I've, I actually found like that makes the boss, I don't know, more aggressive or more difficult to deal with for some. Like that was just kind of an anecdotal realization that I came to after playing it a few times. Could be, could be kind of nonsense, but I just chose to go with it and not destroy those tankers. So this boss is the one that you cannot get to with your regular shot. So this is a, an admirable design in my opinion because the game saying, nope, you've got to you've got to do it the way that that we want you to do it. You've got to make friends with all these enemies and use them to destroy the boss. That's the goal of this particular thing. And when these enemies come out at the staccato kind of rate, I'm I'm hacking each one of them. So it's it's you know quick radar, which is the skinny radar, and then up down ABC for every single one of those enemies, uh, which is you know to say the least, like it gets tiring on your hands. I don't know how people play fighting games. I really do not. I'm not a fighting game person. Um, I don't care for them just in general, but like especially don't care for the idea of just like hitting all these combos that have exact inputs over and over again. I just feel like it would kill my hands. You probably get used to it, but uh, for playing a game like this, I, it, it was it was physically demanding, to say that. Oh, oh, failed the hack, but luckily you didn't get me. Okay, and then those missiles you can get, and those are kind of big damage. Oh, I, there I took the death. Unfortunate. I was pretty close to destroying this guy. By the way, freezing all of these guns that when he's on this side of the screen is really important. So you just you keep freezing them. And then when he goes when he floats back up is when you kind of focus on doing the the befriend blue hack. All right, that's that boss. T took a death, but honestly to have not to have no missed up until that point is pretty good, so we'll take that death. Oh, and then I always forget about this. There are these um, these two big ships launch, and uh, I think there must be some kind of bonus if you manage to kill them really quickly. I've never managed to do it, and he always comes in and destroys this second one. I'm wondering if it's like a secret extend point or something, if you, if you can kill them both quickly, but maybe it's impossible. And maybe there's nothing, there's no reward. I'm, I'm just not sure. The ship kind of looks like the ship from Judgment Silver Sword. That thing, the ship that flies out of there. A whole 12,000 points for hitting 90% of my hacks. Thank you, game. Second to last stage, the classic asteroid belt. Cool background to the stage. I like the the parallax with the asteroids, and then you can see like the the planet in the in the far distance for sure. But it's like decently close, so you can see the lights of like cities and things. That's cool. These guys you want to freeze and then destroy their uh, the spheres they leave behind pretty quickly. I don't know what a good way to fight this guy is. This is an interesting guy. Okay, here, look, we're going to see the destroy hack. Boom. 
So I destroy those missiles using the destroy hack, and then they release revenge bullets that fuck me up. But you have no choice but to destroy them, because they'll just keep chasing you. And uh, and then in the meantime, you want to befriend these guys, these arms, these kind of circular arms. But, like, he never dies. Like, I don't know what the optimal way to do that guy is. And I sure did lose a lot of health right there trying to fight him, so that sucks. Okay, this is a this is an annoying memo spot. You wanna you wanna be sure you bomb these guys, or else they release all of these little mines that home in on you and stick to you. But they're very easy to deal with. You just have to know when they're coming down. They come down pretty quick, and you just hit them with a bomb, and then you don't have to deal with their uh, sticky bombs, sticky mines, I should say. Hacking. All these guys so they don't shoot you and i never mentioned this explicitly but like the fire of hacked enemies um does not hit you uh just something good to call out it's not just that you can run into the enemy it's that their fire doesn't hit you uh didn't handle this properly you're supposed to um you're supposed to make those elevators go up in a in a set way and i just didn't do it so i had to take a bunch of damage getting through that wall Oh, there's the sticky mines. Oh, and what the hell? The elevator went back down. I don't know how I was supposed to avoid that. I hate this part of this game. It is... It, it's evil. The boxes release the little mines. You have to think about freezing the elevators. The ideal way to do it is to um, blue hack all of those little missiles that are attached to the walls so that they kill the boxes. And then um, sometimes you get health items from the boxes, but you never really can tell. And this is a weird part. There's all these uh, missiles and flying around in the background, but then there's this guy shooting you in the foreground. And I think this is like a scoring... This is a scoring thing, so like if you can manage to befriend a bunch of those things in the background, it's good for score, and then they they distract you with that with that big guy just firing a Vulcan cannon straight down at you. I don't know what it nets you if you if you do it right, but I feel like one time I got a bunch of points somehow there. Alright, this is another time where you just get high enough and you befriend all these guys and then they do the, your work, dirty work for you and kill this dude. There we go. Okay, and you would think that uh, after that the stage, would, the stage would be done because that would be the proper length of a stage, but nope. You've got more hallway to deal with. And so here, we're just going to play the game of sit where as few things can shoot me as possible and just befriend everything as quickly as possible. And that usually gets me through this without too much trouble. So I'm just hacking. I'm, I'm going to these strategic safe spots and then just hacking everything kind of slowly. And, and notice that when that red sign appears on an enemy there's a there's a small period of time after you've hacked something where you cannot hack it again so got to be careful about that it can make for some dangerous situations oh we're just sitting here okay we're gonna kill one of these guys for some reason we can't just be done with the stage. It doesn't even give you a health item, which, you know, that might be that might be a good design move, although the game gives you plenty of health, let's be real. But after that hallway section, which can be kind of a uh, tricky once you after, you know, if you're going through it without having played it a bunch, um, it would be nice to get some health after that. And in fact, they do send one ship down to give you some right now. There it is. Okay, this boss has a time limit. 
destroy immediately, three minutes. Doesn't matter because uh, strangely, once you figure this, once you realize that, again, you do not need to play the game on its terms. Uh, and, you know, the more you realize that it's easier when you don't, the easier this particular boss will be. So, like, you could be, like, blue hacking all of this stuff to try and, like, befriend it. I just did one there. But, like, for the most part, I'm just doing what I did for the very first boss, which is tanking through, like, point blanking uh, his middle. I took a death. Um, probably with my amount of health, it couldn't be avoided here. With the style of play, there just is some damage that you have to take, and I was just unfortunately, I only had like four hits to take. <coughs> but there, he, he's he's dead. So even with like, I don't know, six hits or something, maybe I could have done it without losing a life. It's okay. That's definitely the way to play that boss, though. It, it can last, again, forever if you attempt only to kill it by blue hacking the enemies around it. And the benefit of using the the yellow hack is that it freezes all of his like lasers that are spinning around. And so it's just the easiest way to do it is just to yellow hack everything. It kind of freezes everything up and then you just go and do a ton of damage to the middle. By the judgment silver sword ship, I mean the it's like the second, it, it's like the end boss. Not the re true last boss, but the normal last boss. Not the, I didn't mean the Judgment Silver Sword, Sword player ship. Just clarifying. Tough level. I didn't have the best go uh, at this level in this run. But this is, this is kind of where I'm like... The game's design frustrates me because it's been it's taken so long to get here. It's it's tried my hands with input, you know, precise inputs this whole time, like hammering them. And then <clears throat> no level, perhaps fittingly, no level requires more fucking frantic fighting game inputting than this one. You got to deal with these ships in the same way that you did the second uh, level boss but it's way more complicated. You have stuff coming in from behind. You have multiple of uh, big carriers coming in from uh, different sides of the screen. And it's just a big shit show. And, and by this point in the game, I, I'm just, it's testing my patience um, and my, my hand stamina. And uh, I'm just wanting to get to the end, which is unfortunate. It's a pacing problem. I, I truly feel like some editing would have just been made this game so brilliant it is really really quite impressive on so many levels but it just needed some editing that's all okay so i'm trying to do a mix of freezing things here i don't know what opens up the middle of the ship to be attacked but for that one i was able to do it but these other ships that fly in I'm not going to successfully be able to attack their core. And I'll just have to wait them out. So destroying these guns is, is kind of fruitless. Like, it is good. It, it, it holds them at bay, but they do come back. So again, a mix of blue hacking and yellow hacking just barely using that purple, which is unfortunate. I almost, I feel like the the revenge bullet punishment for the purple is too much. Like it made me really just think it was, it was useless or like very, very punishing. Like imagine a purple hacking these ships up top in addition to everything else you have to deal with in this section, you're dealing with revenge bullets coming from the ships that you killed. Like, it's just not, I'm not going to do it when you have the option to use the much more friendly yellow hack or make the ships fire at things for you and not be able to be hit by their bullets. Like, that's just so much better. So it took a death because this section is just a fucking bitch. Look at all this. Ah, I just I just can't focus on it. 
because you know different hacks are ending at different times because you can't hack everything at once uh, there's a limit on what you can select so certain enemies are becoming unfriended or unfrozen at, at different times than other enemies and it happens pretty fast it's just very very um difficult section to keep track of anything in and uh And you might think that we're approaching the uh, final boss here, but uh, in fact, it's simply a prelude boss to what is actually the final boss. Not all that surprising for the end of a shooting game, but long game. Okay, so this is one of those ones where, oh, the ship's going to be behind you, so you can't even use your, your, your Vulcan shot. You got to look at the color of these bombs. And, and enter them and they'll fall away or hack them and they'll fall away according to their color so doing the freeze hack on the yellow ones and this is RNG so you can get really good or really bad patterns here the blue bombs are the only ones it, I think that damage uh, this guy the you know the boss the the yellow ones just fall past him and the and as do the purple ones and then these these guys start coming out. I don't know even what the hell their deal is, but they they just point blank. If you befriend them, they point blank the boss, and if you don't befriend them, they'll point blank you. So this is uh, where this is where blue hacking isn't optional. Now you've got the bombs coming, and you've got the little uh, freakish spheres, and God help you, <laughs> just get through it. Okay, we did without much trouble. Become narrow. For some reason, we've got to have a little Gradius uh, hallway speed zone throwback. Cut it. <laughs> That's what I would say if I were in charge of this game studio. Cut this part. This, you can start it here. This, you can build anticipation thematically, narratively in the same way. You know, just kind of delay these enemies a little bit and just give the player a rest, but don't just, you know, move it along. I bet you didn't think there was more level to come after that boss, but there is. Oh, look at all those revenge bullets. Why would you ever use that? At this point, I, you know, I can't even really explain what I thought my what what my strategy was here. Those those big things uh, shoot missiles that come down at you. Your best bet is to blue hack them so that they they destroy the enemies in the foreground at the top for a, te a technical bonus. But it's five thousand points. I mean, at this point, I don't know. Uh, I wasn't about to get so fussy for five thousand points. I'm mostly just focused on surviving. Like, not losing health, because you need it all for the final boss. I mean, uh, most of the game up until this point, the, the late half, the latter half of the game is difficult, but uh, this, is, this is the most difficult. Okay, another section that I would cut... Uh, Oh, I know it is, it's kind of like an attempt, or I mean, I suspect it's kind of an attempt to really get you familiar with this before it introduces it in the boss context. This idea where what I'm doing is entering my hacks. You can see the my controller down there freaking out. This is the part where it's kind of useful to see that. And uh, if you let these go too long without hacking them, according to their respective colors, they release lasers at you. And so this is just kind of getting you used to that, but it just lasts forever. And then, and then uh, it'll eventually 
in about 10 minutes, we'll get to the boss, the first part of the last boss, and there will be two of these things. And you'll have to contend with two of them at once and and figure out how to kill the the kind of safe that the final boss lives in. So, I mean, it's definitely... Uh, it's definitely leaning into its uh, particular brand of mechanics. That's, you know, you can give it that. And it is a tense kind of gameplay, um, a little gameplay loop here, but it, it, it's it's too much. Like at, at this point, after 45 minutes of game, I just look at those, I just don't want to be doing these inputs over and over and over again. It's just not fun anymore. Okay, you're going to see me struggle through this a little bit. I kind of figure it out eventually. But basically my strategy is to get everything synced to the same time. So basically let everything turn on and then turn everything off in a cycle that you can like easily remember. And so you turn off the pink, you turn off the blue, and then you turn off the yellow. And then that freezes the safe because you've caught the, uh, the safe in the freeze hack as well. And then you go shoot it. And that's the... That's the deal with this. But I still have trouble keeping track of everything. Okay. Managing it pretty good. Oh. Definitely don't be afraid to use the whole screen here. That safe thing in the middle can't hurt you. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Part of you might think that this is the end game, but again, you'd be wrong. And this ship is brutal. Uh, this th this guy has so much health, and his attacks are so numerous and so, in my opinion, difficult to kind of patternize. I'm sure I could do it, especially uh, you know if I were save stating it um you could figure it out but in order to practice it you got to go through the whole level there is stage practice in the game which is uh, appreciated i mean that's better than nothing but um you know didn't study this uh meticulously a whole bunch just just really tried to have enough resources coming in that i could that i could manage through it and i barely got it i think so this is again a mix of befriending stuff so that it goes and attacks and then freezing it and attacking yourself so at that point you know here i'm doing mostly the latter and these fucking ships the the design in this game has this stuff all over the place where you're flipping the screen and so much stuff is coming from behind and you know there's just nowhere to go i mean maybe there's like a tiny little safe spot potentially right in front of him but i wasn't able to find it so i just tanked through all this stuff i just tried to dodge as best i could freeze it when i could befriend it when i could though that's the hardest input to hit and things are going so fast that eventually i think i just i resorted to just freezing everything and just hoping that i could get through it that way All right, so here we go. When he's at the top of the screen, this is where you get your damage in. <coughs> Brutal. Traps you with the outside lasers and then kill shots you with the with the crossing pattern. So far it seems like I'm doing good, but this thing has so much health. Ugh, terrible. Shouldn't have crossed the screen right there. And did I mention that he can hack you and freeze you and damage you with his hacks? And um, I'm not even really sure how to dodge it. I'm trying not to forget to use my bombs. You'll see me using them every once in a while, just targeting his middle. 
Oh, at this point I was getting really nervous because I thought I was doing well. Jeez. It's just... If it makes me feel like there's just a, something huge I'm missing, a strategy to just keep all this stuff at bay, but I, I really just don't think so. And this is a ton of damage he's taking. All four... Oh my god. Okay. Alright, we're at zero. We just got this one health bar. Jesus! Three hits left! Did I get it? Oh, I, oh, I got it. Oh my god. I don't think these guys can kill you after he his middle is dead, but man, I was like... I'm, I'm destroying these as quickly as possible. Just in case. Oh, and then he froze me. Can't move. And then this guy comes to the rescue. What is happening in the in in the actual story of the game? I'm I'm just not sure. But it is neat that it has like a narrative structure. I was so nervous that, you know, I'd never gotten I'd never gotten this clear on one credit, and I was so nervous that, as is so often the case, getting to the end in one credit will would trigger a true last boss. Just like, please no, <laughs> I can't take any more. Gauntlet of a game, you know, it, it it wasn't like tons of time spent learning it, but just the time spent learning it is arduous um, because you're not you're you're kind of flailing around, you're having to do all these inputs, and uh, yeah, the learning that I did do was just not my not the most fun, uh, not the best time I've ever had with a shooting game, but it did make me think uh, a lot about like the potential of these kinds of mechanics obviously um i'm gonna butcher the maybe the pronunciation of this but akashic verse did something similar to this and it kind of leveled it up with more even more combos and i th i think i like that game better just because the pace is so frenetic even though it's way way harder and um more nonsensical arguably it's less classical in its design I just uh, I just didn't like the I didn't like the pace of this game uh, you know that much. I like individual parts about it so much. It is as a package just so impressive. Here we go. Game design, Masa HG. I don't know if this is a I think this is a person. I don't think it's like a studio. Yeah, so much I appreciate about this game, but. Um, holistically just uh, have trouble recommending it without a big asterisk. My special thanks to anyone who uh, watch this video up until this point whoever you are um <laughs> you have you have true uh true shmup interests and uh i appreciate you All right, that's Galax. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.